Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the biggest mistake that I ever made. I did a previous video about a year ago where I shared my experience when I made a mistake as a graduate but this is probably about four years later so to me this was the biggest mistake that I ever made. So first off, a little background to the project. This was a 20 million pound project, so it's pretty big. Really, really complicated site, steep hill, cutting in basements, um, transfer slab, masonry, timber, refurb. This project had so much going on for it and it was really complicated, technically very, very challenging. You had to work really closely with the contractor to make sure that everything was phased correctly. We had a really, really good design team, so working alongside other engineers, our own civil engineers, electrical, mechanical, architects, landscape architects. As a consultancy team, we were working really, really well. But the contractors who were appointed to build this thing was horrendous. Um, they were really, really disorganized. Some of the guys in the sort of financial department were really, um, really, really pushy, really, really arrogant, and just really, really horrible people to work with. So there was loads of friction between us, the design team, and the contracting side. And it did eventually get so bad that they were trying to claim against us, the consultancy, like they were trying to claim against the structures, they put claims in against the architects. We batted it away, so nothing really happened, but that was the kind of relationship that we had. And it's not a very good environment um, to be in. So being in that kind of hostile environment, you really don't want to be making any mistakes. You know, you don't want anything to go wrong to open yourself up to a claim. And when this mistake happened, this was the first thing on my mind. I really was um, panicking because this wasn't just a small mistake. This was actually genuinely could have been fatal. So I think this happened around Feb time and I remember this because I think it was around a month before I took or retook my ICE chartership exam. So I was an experienced engineer and this mistake happened and it really shook my confidence. So on the day, I remember getting a phone call from the contractor explaining the problem. And this was really, really common of a project this size, you know, throughout the week, I would be probably daily getting at least one phone call or one email multiple emails probably from the site team for you know requesting information or just answering a query, they come up with a problem, but generally it's really, really common. So I didn't really think much of it when the contractor rang me that day. So what happened was they had installed a steel beam and they were loading on these precast concrete planks. And they said that when they were installing these planks, the beam was deflecting by a lot. And I was thinking on the phone like, hey, you know, the beam's meant to deflect, you know, there's a limit. How bad could it be? And they said on the phone that once they put the planks on and saw how much it deflected, they took the planks off. So they didn't actually install it. So whilst I was on the phone, I was like, all right, don't worry. I'm gonna go through the drawings and just have a quick look, double check the calculations. I'm sure it's gonna be fine, but I'll ring you back, you know, in a few minutes time once I've confirmed and let you continue installing. That's what I had in my head, that's what I said. And I figured, you know, once I checked, the calc is gonna be absolutely fine. It's probably gonna be well within the limits. I'm thinking it's bound to deflect, you know, you're putting precast planks onto the beam, it's bound to deflect. It's probably nothing to worry about. Once I picked up the drawings, so I remember going to get the drawings and having a look, and I do remember thinking, this is weird, this is quite a big span and it's quite a small beam, but I'm sure it's all right, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be fine. Had a look at the next level up, and I was like, oh, okay, this, this beam is actually picking more than just the plank, it's picking up the planks and it's also picking up a wall. And I'm pretty sure that this line on line in the building is a low bearing wall. But again, I'm pretty sure it's fine. I'm pretty sure I've done the calcs for it, checked it, can't possibly be wrong. Looked up at the level above that, and it confirmed my suspicion that that wall was a low bearing wall and it was picking up another plank. And this is when I started getting really, really worried because I originally thought it's a big span, small, shallow beam. And now this isn't just a typical floor beam, this is a transfer beam. And I was thinking, just by purely by inspection, I was like, this is taking a lot of load, big span. There's something wrong here. Like I didn't really need to go and look at the calcs to realize that something was terribly wrong. And when you've picked up that experience and gained that intuition to just look at a span and look at what it's supporting, 
and very very quickly realising that this beam is not big enough. And I just ran some really really quick numbers on it, didn't even look at the couch, didn't try to find the calculation in our pretty substantial calculation pack, didn't even look at that, just went and plugged some numbers in and I'm, this, this beam was failing by about a utilisation of like three. It was way undesigned. At this point I didn't know what had happened and how it slipped through in there. But I remember as soon as I realised how big a problem I had, I went straight to my manager who at the time sat directly opposite me. And I remember going up to him and just saying, look, we've got this problem on Hope House, that was the project name. We've got this problem, it's really serious, but I'm gonna sort it out, don't worry about it, I'm gonna sort it out. And given the nature of our relationship between the design team and the contractor, there's a potential <laughs> a claim that could ensue here. But the great thing about my manager was he was cool as you like on the outside. I don't know if he was shitting himself inside, but what he said to me was just like, all right, cool. If you need any help, just come grab me. Like, just didn't say anything else. Completely trusted that there was a problem, but I was going to fix it. And I think a lesson learned here is you just need to come clean when you make a mistake, own up to it, and then try and sort it out, try and fix it. And I remember going back to the drawings and trying to think of solutions on how to solve this problem. I didn't actually think at the time who was responsible for making this error. You know, was it me or was it actually someone else? Because I didn't join the project until about Reva stage three. So it could have been before my time. I didn't think about that at the time. All I was focused on was finding a solution to this problem because it doesn't matter whose fault it was the problem is we need to get this design fixed so that the contractors can carry on building the building you can find out whose fault it was later but even then it doesn't even matter sure it's good to know but at that point in time you know you need to be quick at resolving the problem so that the contractor doesn't lose too much time i can just crack on with constructing the building i'm not sure if i've still got any drawings on it but I think I remember the solution was to utilize some non-load bearing walls and turn them into load bearing walls, installing a beam near enough mid-span to cut, reduce the bending moment and reduce the deflections completely. Because I knew we had a transfer slab, so once I worked out the forces, worked out the loads, I could go back to my transfer slab model and check that the forces were okay. Luckily it was, and I think I had to specify a plate on top of the failed, failing beam to make sure that the flexions were in limit as well. I couldn't just specify, you know, use a bigger beam, because one, that's going to cost more money, and two, it's probably not going to fit with the architectural requirements of a really tight headroom. So it's a great learning thing to do this because you're thinking of ideas, utilising the you know, surrounding structure to come up with a solution. So once I had actually thought about and you know, design checked the solution, sketched out, ran a contractor, sent it by email, talked it through with him, and you know, they accepted that there was a mistake and they could move on. Um, I tend to have a very good relationship with contractors, you know, try to talk through everything with them, even though it's my mistake, if you own up to it and you're quick about resolving the problem, they're generally going to be okay. So I mentioned earlier that this kind of happened about a month before I was resitting my ICE exam. And you can imagine for me, and for me to have this pretty big mistake at a time where I should be, you know, near chartered, I should be really, really, you know, pretty qualified and I shouldn't be making these kind of mistakes. This was a really big blow to my confidence. And at the time, because I was so close to exam day, I was going into the office every weekend to finish writing my report, prepping for an exam. But I remember the weekend after that problem, I went into the office to prepare for the exam, but I was still so worried about this mistake and I was trying to think, like, have I made a mistake with this remedial design that I spent maybe two or three extra hours on the weekend redoing the entire calculation just double check that I had done everything right 
considered all the loads, you know, check the slab, the beams, all the walls, you know, I'd considered everything because I just could not afford another mistake. And in my opinion, I think that's kind of the right attitude to go with. Engineering, structure engineers, you're designing stuff and if things go wrong, it can kill people. If the contractor hadn't taken off those planks and then just continued to build, that beam would have failed so fucking badly. It probably would have you know, failed. And if anyone was underneath those planks, they, they would have been killed. So it was really, really scary prospect. So I really, really wanted to make sure that the numbers added up and it was you know, really safe. The most important thing for me wasn't about the money, wasn't if we were gonna get claimed at. It was, I need to make sure that the structure is safe. And that fear, that responsibility is really important as an engineer. If you're thinking about these really critical things, what's the most, most important thing? It's not money, it's safety. Making sure that your design is you know, critically safe. It's making contractors who are building it safe, people who are gonna be using it safe. And having gone through this experience, it's kind of enhanced that ideology even more that you really do have to make sure that whatever you design is checked, double checked, and is definitely safe. So I did actually go back and try to pinpoint where this went wrong. And this beam that was specified was specified right from the beginning, from stage two. So I did inherit this design from stage three onwards, but it's not, it's no good just saying like, oh, well, you know, the guy who designed the stage two design, you know, they specified beam, it was their fault. It's not because I've now taken ownership at stage three, stage four, stage five. I've taken ownership of this project which means I've taken ownership of the stage two design and it's my responsibility to double check everything. Redesign everything if I have to, but I needed to make sure that whatever's on the drawing as it goes out at stage three, stage four, stage five is correct. And even though, yeah, it wasn't my responsibility at stage two, it became my responsibility. So in the end, even though I didn't specify that, that beam, it became my fault, my problem. And I think it's really important that even if someone who's really experienced designing something at stage two doesn't make it right, you still have to go through the process of designing every element. Just because someone else designed it doesn't make it right. You have to personally check it and you have to personally make sure that it's correct. And to be honest, honestly, I don't understand how that beam went through all those stages and didn't get picked up. And I'm not blaming my manager, I'm blaming myself. I can't believe that that went, you know, that beam size went through all those stages without getting picked up. Because as soon as the contractor called me and I looked at the drawing, I was like, you know, something told me really quickly that this is wrong. And why I didn't spot it until that point, I have no idea. But it was really, really obvious. As soon as I, you know, just looked at it and then looked at the next floor up, I knew just something was really wrong with that beam size. If there's anything to learn from this video and this story, it is make sure that you own up to any mistake. Take ownership of it, learn from it, make sure it never happens again. If you try and hide a mistake, that's probably the worst thing you can do. Because if you try and hide it and then it comes out a month later and someone dies or you know something maybe not so serious but something goes wrong and you get claimed on, you're gonna be in so much trouble. It's way better to just own up to it, admit the mistake, and then move on. If you've got a really good manager like I had, who's really, really understanding, really cool, really calm, you'll get through it. And hopefully they'll be there to support you if something goes absolutely tits up. I'm pretty sure every engineer is gonna go through, maybe not something that serious, but they are going to go through times when something doesn't go right. And it's really important how you learn from these mistakes. And it's also really important in how you are able to come up with solutions quickly. Like I managed to, you know, not to pat myself on the back, but I did manage to come up with a viable solution which didn't cost them that much extra money to fix. They had to install a short span beam and then weld an extra plate. So it really wasn't that much extra money or time. It's just, you know, it is embarrassing for me that a mistake like that happened but understanding projects that size, mistakes do happen. It was caught early enough, you know, I've got to give the contractor, you know, a pat on the back that they 
realise that something was wrong. Don't think that all contractors are stupid. Some of them are actually very, very knowledgeable. So, you know, if they do say that something is wrong, be sure to check it out. Anyway, I hope you've learned something from this story, from this video. If you've got any questions about it, or if you've got any other questions about any of my other videos, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.